I want to spend some time talking about the broader context in which we develop and operate our web applications. Uh, some of this is a little bit of review. We can see here the application server. That's the node program that uh, runs Happy, which is our application server, and then it uses objection to do object relational mapping, which then talks to Connex, which takes the object relational mapping calls and turns them into SQL statements that are then issued through the Postgres driver over a network connection to our Postgres database. So that's all familiar to you by now. Uh, we've also been so far using uh, an external program called Postman as our client. So this is what we've been using to send our requests to the happy server to check to make sure that it's working properly and then getting the results back and, and displaying them as JSON objects, for example. And you can see I've got a network connection here that goes directly from Postman to the happy server itself where the requests are received and processed. So the next thing I'm going to show is maybe a little bit unexpected in that I'm going to go right to the production deployment of a single page web app. So that picture looks like this. Postman is now out of the picture and instead we have this single page web app, which of course consists of the browser in which the application is running. And then our application code, the business logic that makes our application work according to the customer's requirements. We're also going to use a library called Vue, which is a user interface toolkit that allows us to make front-end application for our, our customer, and then Vuetify, which is a style library that provides us with a whole bunch of user interface components that work well with Vue to produce a nice looking display. The connection from the browser is not going directly to Node, as was the case for Postman when we were in the mode of just testing our application server. Instead, in production, our application is always going to connect to a web server. So this box right here illustrates that web server it might be a separate piece of hardware or a virtual machine. And then running on that machine is going to be a program that is the web server software. I'm showing an instance of Nginx, which is kind of my favorite industrial strength web server. You might also have heard of Apache and a bunch of others that do this same kind of a job. But the point of a web server and the web server software that runs on it is to provide content back to browsers and other clients across the internet when they request them. So the first thing that is gonna happen when we go into our browser and type in the URL for our application, it's gonna make a connection across the internet to the web server software. And the software is gonna look at that request and try to satisfy it. Now the very first request that we're gonna make is probably gonna be something that's gonna ask for the HTML page that contains our application. Where is Nginx gonna find that? Well, I'm showing here that Nginx can go out and refer to static files. This is just a directory structure on the same server machine that the Nginx process is running on. And included there is gonna be, for example, an HTML file that corresponds to the request that came in from our browser. In addition, we're gonna to package together all of the various JavaScript and CSS and other functionality that's part of our application and store it in this same file system location. So when the browser requests the original page that contains the application, Nginx is gonna send it, say, an HTML document that's gonna then include a bunch of script tags uh, that are gonna pull down additional content, additional JavaScript that make up the application itself as well as uh, the libraries like Vue and Vuetify, they're going to come with it. So question is, where does the stuff that's stored here in this static files directory come from? Well, some of it is going to be things that we've just downloaded that we're using. So for example, Vue itself and Vuetify's style files and so forth, those are going to be things that we, have, we will have downloaded off of the internet that are going to be stored on our local development machine and eventually pushed out to our web server. But importantly, the application that we're developing is also something that needs to be packaged up and stored in this location so that Nginx can get a hold of it to send out to the browser. The source files for our application, the JavaScript files that make up our single page app, are going to be stored someplace on our development machine. And I've just illustrated the, this, this source files directory as another location on a disk someplace. And there's going to be a process required when we're ready to deploy our application to production, where we're going to take those source files and any other supporting files like CSS, 
uh, or, or other image files and so forth that we're using in our single page application. And we're going to package those up by running a command that we'll see when we start talking about the development environment specifically. But it's going to take all those source files and it's going to bundle them together and store them in a location in the file system where our web server can get hold of it. That's kind of a one-time process here when we take our source files and we package them. So at some point in the development cycle, which we're about to talk about next, we'll decide this particular version of the software is ready for release into the wild. We're going to make a commit to the revision control system, we're going to tag it as a release version of our software, and we're going to do a packaging operation that's going to combine all that stuff together and store it out here in a location where the web server software can access it. After that, then any clients that come across from the internet to ask for this application are just going to receive information from these static files and the Nginx is going to deliver them back out to the browser. In particular, those external users aren't going to have access to these source files that make up the application itself. Now, so far, all we're showing is the ability of Nginx to serve up these static files. But we know that once the application gets loaded into the browser here and starts running, that it's going to want to make requests to our application server. It's going to have to talk to the database to read things, update things, and so forth as part of the application. Well, you'll notice that there's no longer a direct connection between the application itself and the happy app server. The only connection that's available to our application is this one over the internet to talk to our web server. Well, it turns out that what we're going to do in production is we're going to configure Nginx so that it can do one of two main things. The first, we've already been talking about at length, is to serve static files. So when the browser asks for food.html, Nginx goes and looks out on its directory structure and says, oh look, food.html, I'll go ahead and send that back to the browser. But there's going to be some requests that the application is going to make from the, from the browser to, to Nginx that Nginx is not going to recognize as one of the static files that it knows about. And we can configure Nginx such that when those kinds of requests arrive, it can forward the request on to some other server on the server side. And that's what this arrow is intended to illustrate. When Nginx doesn't know how to handle a request, it's going to make the assumption, based on how we configure it, that this must be a request to our application server. So it turns around and it forwards that request onto the application server, where Happy is waiting to pick up that request. So it looks exactly, th this request here looks exactly like the kind of requests that we were making before in the development environment where we are sending requests from Postman, except now they're going to come from our application across the internet. Nginx is going to recognize that as a request for the application server and forward it over to Happy. Then Happy is going to do exactly the same things it's been doing before. Process that RESTful API call with whatever method gets used in the HTTP verb and then send results back to Nginx. When Nginx gets those results back from Happy, it's going to turn around and forward them back to the browser that made the original request. So it kind of completes this round trip from the application over the internet to the web server to the application server, maybe goes out and does something on the database and sends a JSON result back here that Nginx then forwards back to the browser. Now this is all fine and good in a production environment where we've got a fairly stable code base and we can compile that down into bundles that we can deliver to our web browsers. But you could imagine that this kind of a process would be a little clunky during the development of our web server software in that we don't want to necessarily have to run a separate web server. We don't want to have to compile our source files down into these static files every time we want to make a change or test something and then wait for the web browser to load those things all over from Nginx. So in a development setting, the connections look quite different. First of all, notice that we are now allowing our web browser, the application code on our web browser, to talk directly to Happy again. There's no web server in the picture. There's no static file serving going on. The web server is basically not part of this process during development. Instead, what we want to have is some nice way for us to be able to make changes in our source files back here and have those changes be sent over to our browser so that we can see the changes and test them in a very quick development cycle. So we want to be able to go out here and edit our source files in our integrated development environment, save those changes back, and have those changes bundled and automatically delivered to our browser so we see those right away in the, in the browser that we're using for testing and can then turn around and run the application 
directly back to the application server. The mechanism that we're going to use here is actually part of the Vue ecosystem. There's something called the Vue CLI service, and its job basically is to watch for changes in your source files. And when it sees a change, it's going to wake up and it's going to package up the change and forward it across this connection, which is usually a local connection on your laptop or desktop, and tell the application, hey, I've got some updated code for you. Please replace the old version of this file with this new code. And that happens very quickly. It doesn't require a complete rebuild of the whole system and serving stuff over static files like in production. Uh, and the, uh, the browser will actually update the application on the fly. So within a second or two, after you make a change to a file and save that change out to the file system, the CLI service wakes up, forwards just the change across to your application, and then there's a little piece of code on the app that runs in this environment that knows how to insert that update directly into your running code and refresh your browser so that it just continues to run with those changes. So a super convenient way to do development where the edit, deploy, test cycle can be very, very quick and make it much more convenient to develop than if you had to constantly go in and compile all your source files into static files and serve them over a web server. So this is the environment that we're going to use for our development process to build the view-based application that we're going to use for the rest of the term.